Good morning. Good morning, CC Online family, and morning, welcome family. to Sunday. I am your host, Akia. Hi, Akia. And I'm Yalitza. It's Hi, Yalitza. Hey. <laughs> it's so good to be with you here this morning. Um, we want to make sure we shout out our friends who are always faithful to be with us. So who do we have? We have Diaria. Hey, Diaria. Welcome. Hey, Diaria. Nice to nice for you to join us today. Billy. Hey, Billy. Good morning. Hi, Billy. And we have Marlene and Charles. Marlene and Charles. It's always good to have you. Absolutely. So how have you been enjoying this weather? I have here at the Northeast. It's been great. You know, we've had experience, you know, seven degree weather. Oh, so my favorite. My favorite. I'm, I'm loving it. Absolutely. So Today is I. really good. The sun is shining. The you sun. feel good. You feel amazing. Oh, it's definitely my time of year. It's definitely <laughs> my favorite time of the year, actually. So, All right. Well, there is, there is an amazing event that's coming up, Yelitsa. What yes, is that event that they need to be at? This is especially for the ladies. Any ladies out there? Mm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we have our Flourish Women's Conference, and it's taking place April, Friday the 19th, 7.30 p.m. It's going to be amazing. at the Rockaway <laughs> Campus. It is going to be amazing. So make sure, you guys, what do they need to do? They need to register, and they need to complete the early bird registration by March 19, 18th. 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 So March tomorrow. 18th. By tomorrow, tomorrow, Monday. So get on it. You can use the link below or the QR code that you see on your screen, but make sure you get in because God is going to do amazing things. He did an amazing thing last year. I, I can attest to that personally. I was there. We were at the Montclair campus, and I believe he's going to do the same and more oh, this year. I love it. I love it. Yes. We're going to have um, two guest speakers, right? They're going to be two guest speakers that are yes, coming. Are. Um, there's going to be inspiration. There's going to be teaching, God's word. People are going to be full. And time of prayer. Oh, my gosh. So Just time corporate of time getting together, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, that's awesome. It's going to be a full package. So make sure... Uh, invite a friend, yes. bring your daughters, yes. bring your aunties, yes. bring your cousins, <laughs> bring your neighbors, bring them all. <laughs> bring all the ladies. <laughs> well, what do they need to do in order to continue to follow what's happening here at Christchurch? Well, you got to subscribe. You know, have you subscribed to all of our channels, whether it's Facebook, online, uh, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube, right here. <laughs> you know, make sure you like, subscribe and follow. Absolutely. And share the love with someone. Make sure you share. share Absolutely. Share. And if you need prayer, please don't hesitate to put your prayer request down in the chat. OK. And when we come back, we'll pray for you as well as the online prayer team will be here to pray for them as well. That's right. We're always encouraged by praying for you. So we look forward to those moments. Absolutely. And no issue is too big and no issue is too small. Make so sure. It's, it's really important that we get together and we pray one for another, just like the Bible tells us to do. Right, Yelitsa? That's right. That's <laughs> right. All right. Well, I'm excited about the worship that's going to take place I hear today. It. I hear. I do. And I'm excited about the word today. So I'm excited to see what God does in this service. And we'll be back to talk about our favorite um, prayer points. I did see a couple more people jump on. Alan. Hi, Alan. Hi, hey, Nancy. Alan. So good hey, to Nancy. see you. It yes. is time for Sal. worship. Oh, Sal is here as well. Come on. Join us inside. We are ready to go. Come on ready? in. I am ready to go and Come worship on, in the presence of the Lord. We'll see you soon. See you soon. Who's excited to be in the house of God today? Come on. God is going to speak to us today. He's going to move in a mighty way, in a way that only He can move. God, you know the cry of our hearts. We want to worship you.
what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. Oh, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. Oh, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. Oh, this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giant.
powerful time in worship where we can declare together something has to break. We're asking God to do the impossible, to work a miracle, to work a blessing in our lives, in the lives of our families. In fact, let me pray with you. Father, thank you that in worship, we can know your heart and we can receive all that you have for us. I pray that as we give you our worship, Father, bless us, bless us indeed, I pray in every way. And may we draw closer to you and draw closer to one another. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Welcome, welcome to CC Online. It is always our joy to have you join us. Wherever you're tuning in from, we would love for you to connect with us. On the screen, you'll see a QR code and a link. It's there that we ask that you follow that link and you can find some free resources. We encourage you to do that right away. You know, we have so many things happening here at Christ Church that we want you to know about. Let's check it out. that gave her the fuel that she needed to endure by faith, to walk by faith, to war by faith, to live by faith, to rejoice by faith. And when you know that you are walking in purpose, it doesn't matter who rises up against you. That will draw you nearer to your source. You and I, we are anointed and we are qualified not because of what we've done, but because of who calls us. know with just a few hours per month you can make a huge impact just by using your time and talents with dozens of serving team opportunities from greeting people with a warm welcome helping them find a seat capturing moments on camera encouraging the younger generation to learn more about Jesus or even e-serving opportunities at Christ Church there's a serving team with your name on it when you become a part of a serving team, you'll have the chance to meet wonderful new people while partnering with God to create an atmosphere where lives can truly be transformed. Help us unite people to God and people to people by finding your serving team today. What a powerful time in worship. And I just want to encourage you, if you're not already serving on a Sunday experience serving team, would you consider doing that today? Thank you for doing that. We're going to transition now to a time of giving, a time of worshiping the Lord through the giving of our tithes and offerings. The Bible describes a tithe as one-tenth of your income, and an offering as being anything above and beyond that. For the safest and simplest way to give, we ask that you follow the promptings on the screen. In the book of Deuteronomy, ch chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible says, For remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And that verse reminds me of a man I had the pleasure of hearing share a powerful story at a conference a few years ago. This man began his speech by referencing Deuteronomy 8.18 and goes on to share that he started his company with $600 in 1972 and committed to tithing not only his earnings, but his company's earnings as well. He shared how tough it was, especially at the beginning, to remain committed to tithing. But no matter what, he would always remember that it was God who gave him the ability to produce wealth. Today, that company he started employs more than 45,000 people, has more than 1,000 locations and revenue of eight billion per year and is considered one of the largest overtly Christian companies in the world. That man is David Green, CEO and founder of Hobby Lobby. And I don't say this to exalt David, but I'm saying it to let you know that what our society values 
may be how much a person has, but God values how much a person gives. Would you allow me to pray over your gifts? Father, I thank you for our sacrificial people who give week in and week out to support the work of your kingdom here on earth. I pray, Lord, that as they give, that you would honor your word and open up the windows of heaven and bless them in every single way, in every area of need that they would have no lack. I pray, Lord, that you would also give seed to the sower as your word promises you would. Use these gifts for the glorification of your holy name here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we're going to go back into the sanctuary now for worship.
Would you bow your heart with me as I lead you in a word of prayer? Father, over these few moments in sacred scripture, I pray that you would just deal with each of our hearts in such a way that what you want to do in us and with us and through us can be accomplished in even a greater way. So anoint me, I may speak with clarity and the power of the Holy Spirit. In Christ's name, amen. I'm sure you'll like the title of this sermon. The title is Me and My Big Mouth. And I'm not just talking about me personally. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about us. I'm in the second week of a three-week series about walking with God. And one of the things that you'll find that when you walk with God, he helps you to become more like him. And even in the way you communicate, I'm not talking about having religious words. I'm not talking about every time you say something, it's, you know, the Lord said this, and you speak in Elizabethan English, thou, and I'm not speaking about that. I'm talking about what Scripture says, for example, with Peter, when Jesus was, was, was going to be betrayed, and here's Peter warming himself by the fire, and one of the ladies that were there said, your speech gives you away that you're one of them. In other words, the way he spoke, the way he communicated in terms of the cleanness of speech, there was no dirty jokes, the tone, same way we must be mindful of our speech gives us away, the, you know, your jokes, your speech, your tone of your emails, your overall respectful communication. I love what Rick Warren says. The greatest reward of walking with God is not what you get, but who you become. See, by, by walking with God, you take on his character, his values, his communication style. And at the same time, you take off attitudes, you take off actions, you take off values that don't resemble God. The change in your spiritual wardrobe, it actually affects the way you communicate because the change starts place, it takes place first in your heart. I never realized that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus said that, but I never realized the truth of that until I needed help. Before I came to Christ, I had a foul mouth. Every other word was an F-bomb. Every other word was an expletive as this college student. I was so afraid that I was getting ready to, as I graduated, I would go on interviews for a job. And I was so afraid. I said, man, I don't know what I'm going to say. When they asked me, well, why do you want to work here? And when they asked me any questions, and it goes, well, I'm going to say I want to work here because of blank, 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 blank. And I didn't even realize that my problem was so, I, I couldn't control it. And then something happened to me that was out of this world. I gave my heart to Christ, and I didn't realize it had a direct impact on my speech. The moment I gave my heart to Jesus and said, be my Lord, be my God, my speech changed. I no longer was bound by this need to express myself using profanity. Then I recognized the speech is connected to the heart. What would your life be like if you had better control over your mouth? How would your personal or professional relationships improve if you didn't have, and pardon the statement, such a big mouth. It may not be profanity, but maybe hurtful statements, sharp, cutting statements. In other words, la boca es muy grande. <laughs> you have a big mouth. I have a big mouth. We have a big mouth. We've been reading through the book of James. And what we've learned from chapter one is that God wants us to walk with him even during trials. He'll help us. Chapter two taught us how to walk with God by engaging our faith. 
chapter 3, where I'll be today, it's helping us tame our tongue. Let me begin, let me begin at verse 1 of James 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who's never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they're steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. Let's stop there. We're going to walk our way through James 3, the first 12 verses. Because part of discipleship or becoming more and more like Jesus, learning to walk with God, it's not just about doing the right things or believing the right things. It's about speaking the right things in the right ways. So to get a better handle on taming the tongue, well, we'll see that James offers us four lessons that can help us. May I point you to the first lesson, which is cultivate awareness. James observed, like all of us have, that we stumble in many ways. In other words, we mess up a lot of times in a lot of ways. It's natural. It's human nature, James says. But our words and our speech can be one of the ways that we stumble. The tongue must be tamed or subdued brought into control. That means that when God controls me, it helps me to control my tongue because my tongue has been brought into submission to God because of my relationship with him. Think about having a new puppy that you bring home. You're gonna have to teach that puppy how not to go to the bathroom in the house. And it's going to take some time to, as if it were, to domesticate and housebreak that puppy. Same way when we come to faith in Christ, God wants to domesticate us and tame us that your tongue won't cause problems. So James tells us that we're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination because we say things that foot and mouth, take it out. Because if we put it in there sometimes. I have a problem. When I stopped the profanity, I started other habits that I didn't realize I need to address. Sometimes I'd say, this person's a flake. Oh man, a flake. And a flake to me means that they're unfaithful, you can't depend on them, and they just... And I remember, here I am on a speaking engagement... And we're in the green room and there are about 10 leaders, significant leaders around the table. And then I said, what are we going to do with these flakes? And it just so happened that one of the guys' last name was Flake. And so he said, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Please pass me a surgical knife so I can take my foot out of my mouth. The idea is that we cultivate an awareness this new grocery clerk, he's working in the supermarket, and a lady comes up to him and said, Sir, do you have half a head of lettuce? He said, Half a head of lettuce? He said, Ma'am, I just started working a couple of days ago. Let me, ask my, let me ask my store manager. So he goes over to the store manager, who happens to be in the produce aisle, and he says, Do you have half, do we have half a head of lettuce? Because there's a crazy woman over there asking me for half a head of lettuce. And when he turned around, he just happened before the manager said anything, the lady was right behind him. And so he's there and he said, and he said, but this fine lady would like to have the other half. <laughs> Sometimes we're very good with words and we're very slick and clever, but it's still wrong. 
There's a cultivation that James is saying that we must have of an awareness that practicing mindfulness in knowing your words, that your words have the power to heal or hurt. It has the power to build up or tear down. Your words have the power to stitch up or cut up. And so cultivating an awareness is a habit that's developed by being intentional and being mindful about the power of your words. So what do you do before you say something? We've heard it said, pause before you think. Think before you say something. You got to ask yourself some questions. Is what I'm about to say true, kind, or necessary? And so that helps us to really pause. Finish this children's rhyme for me. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, some of you never heard the children's rhyme, but words shall never hurt me. (laughs) Parents used to teach their children that way. My parents taught me that. But the problem was that words do hurt. They taught us that because when someone said something to us that we didn't like or called us a name and we got angry, we wouldn't go to blows or pick up a stick or do something wrong or call them a worse name because we would have that nursery rhyme in our heads. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words shall never hurt me. You know, the first time that was spoken, it was in 1844 in England. But it wasn't really sticks and stones, it was golden sticks and stones. And then in 1863 in Boston, E.H. Hayward gave a speech And he used an example in his speech that said that this little girl, she was there and there was a group of kids and some kid had called another kid this really, really nasty name and the kids are about to go to blows and then all of a sudden the little girl in the crowd yells out, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names can never hurt me. And quickly they disbanded, didn't fight. The problem with that nursery rhyme is what Douglas Moo, the renowned New Testament scholar, said. Far easier to heal are the wounds caused by sticks and stones than the damage caused by words. In other words, when we walk with God, you have to allow God to help you tame, subdue your tongue. And that happens when you cultivate an awareness that your tongue, as small as it is, as light as it weighs, that tongue can get you into a lot of trouble and can cause a major damage. Cultivate awareness. Let me bring you back to the text, verse 6. The tongue is like a spark. It is an evil power that dirties the rest of the body and sets a person's entire life on fire with flames that come from hell itself. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures can be tamed and have been tamed. But our tongues get out of control. They are restless and evil and always spreading deadly poison. What is James saying to us? Why is he warning us about the need for God to help you and you put yourself in the position by walking with God to help so that he can help you tame your tongue? What is he saying? He's saying to get a better handle on taming your tongue, you have to manage your emotions. See, your tongue speaks what's in the heart. And when you walk with God, you got to work hard at allowing God to help you tame your tongue. And so what, is, what, has, what has to happen? God has to break you in just the right places so that you walk in deep dependence on him. Saying the wrong things, as James points out, can set your entire life on fire. And then he says, the fires of hell. That word hell there is the Greek word Gehenna. And it was referring to 
the Hebrew name for this valley, the Valley of Hinnom, which was located in the southern part of the city of Jerusalem. It was the garbage trash, you know, the place where the town garbage, the city garbage was brought to, like the landfill today. People would burn their garbage there. And the challenge is the fire would always go on, kept on burning. And James was telling us that if we don't manage our emotions, we're going to say something. And when we say something, it's going to start a fire. And that fire is going to be a spark. And it's going to be burning like the fires of hell. You're going to create a lot of mayhem and a lot of pain. And it all started because this little thing. And it doesn't have to be what you speak. It could be what you write. It could be an email. It could be a text message. It could be an Instagram post. It could be any form of communication that when someone gets it, oh man, it starts. The fires gets out of control off from a little spark. Have you heard of the Medicino Complex fire? It occurred in 2018 in California. It burned some 459,000 acres, more than any fire in California's history. According to the Los Angeles Times and the investigative report, this damaging fire was a combination of two fires. It was the river fire, and then when the river fire was going, it met up with a fire that started called a ranch fire, and the two became named the Medocino Complex Fire. They, that fire burned 459,123 acres, destroyed 280 structures, and damaged an additional 37. One firefighter died, Three were injured. This fire cost $257 million in damage. Its duration ran from July of 2018 to January of 2019. In essence, this seven-month-long fire began. You know how it began? Because a ranch owner was trying to set up a summer shade over his water tank. And when he did that, it just he irritated a wasp nest in the ground. And he got this metal stake and he took his hammer and hit the stake to cover up that hole for the wasp nest. A spark flew, it caught some nearby grass and the rest was history. One little spark, 459,123 acres gone. One spark. What is James trying to tell us? James is trying to tell us that be careful that you're not going to say something because you have not managed your emotions. So how do you manage your emotions so you don't react and create a spark that's going to burn your family up or burn your professional career or burn your career in ministry or whatever area where you're interacting with people? He's saying, look, to manage your emotions, take some time. In other words, you may not even know what's causing you to get angry. Sometimes it has nothing to do with what was said. It has to do with what you feel. And anger is one of the easiest emotions to display. You just go crazy. Why? Figure out what's going on inside. I remember I pulled my car up in front of this Jamaican restaurant years ago. I wanted to buy a Jamaican beef patty. When I went in there, the proprietor was by himself, but he was seething with rage. Now, this was around, I don't know, 10 a.m. in the morning. And I I said to him, why are you so angry? He said, I'm getting ready to kill somebody. I said, why? And now, I'm Jamaican, I understand. Jamaicans, when they say something, they mean it. And so when he said he's getting ready to kill somebody, he really means he's getting ready to kill somebody. He's not talking about... See, that's the difference. An American says, I'm getting ready to kill somebody. He says, ah, it's just a hyperbole. Jamaican says, I'm getting ready to kill somebody. He's getting ready to kill somebody. He said, I'm getting ready to kill somebody. I said, why? He said, the guy who owns the Chinese restaurant next door, they keep leaving these chicken parts in a bag in front of my door. I told them not to do it. And I just went over there 10 minutes before you came into the store. And, and, and I told him, if he doesn't move that, those bags of chicken parts, in 10 minutes, I'm going to kill him. So I said, how many minutes do you have left? (laughs) He said, I got about eight minutes. 
I said, you're going to lose your family, you're going to lose your kids, you're going to lose everything, your store, all that. He said, yeah. I said, well, I just want one beef patty just before. <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> and sure enough, the guy with the chicken parts moved the bag because he knew the Jamaican guy was crazy. And so he understood. <laughs> The noted author and pastor Ambrose Beer said, speak when you're angry and you'll make the best speech you will ever regret. In other words, when you allow time to go on and you process your anger, you're able to sort it out and find that there are better emotions or better ways for you to express yourself that's not going to fuel the fire or stir the pot. So in order to control your emotions, establish a goal when you speak. In other words, are you looking to hurt the person? If so, remove the label disciple of Jesus from back of the back of your name. If you're looking to show the, the other person that you're not a pushover, you're not a punk, okay, remove the label servant of God from behind your name. Are you looking to resolve the conflict in a way that honors God and preserves the relationship? If yes, then you're truly learning how to walk with God. You have to understand, you got to control your emotions. I was on a flight to the UK, and we're over the Atlantic Ocean, midway, six-hour flight. And all of a sudden, the woman that was in the center section to the right of me, sitting with her husband and her little daughter, about maybe five, six years old, she was in the middle of the flight. She just turned to her husband and said, you're no man. I'm sitting there, saying, okay. Then she kept saying it louder and louder. You're not a real man. People looking around, who's not the real man? And they realize he's not the... So the little girl starts crying because the, the woman had been drinking. And so whatever was in her heart, the alcohol gave her liquid courage. And so all of a sudden, then she went into the, to the, to the, to the restroom and she lit up a cigarette. And you can see the, the fumes and the, and the smoke coming from under the door. And then they sent one of the flight attendants to... Tell her to shut, tell that cigarette, to put out the cigarette and come out of that restroom. And they, when she came out, they said, where are you smoking? She said, no. And you see all this cloud around her. Smoking. She said, no, I was, I was smoking. She said, ma'am. And they said, ma'am, if you don't sit down, you'll be arrested. So she sat down next to her husband. And you can hear her. She couldn't even control herself. She said, you're no man. <laughs> Still saying it. But he controlled himself. And I smiled because he controlled his emotions. Some of us would have taken the whole flight down. The whole plane would have gone down because someone said, you're not a real man. <laughs> it's, the idea is that to get a better handle on taming your tongue, you cultivate awareness, you manage your emotions, and I want to bring you back to what James was encouraging us to do as we're learning to walk with God. Verse 9 captures that. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives? or a grapevine bear figs, neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. What is James telling us? James is advising us that if we're going to allow God to help us tame our tongue, we must choose our words wisely. Choosing your words, your words wisely, it's another way of saying Decide what you want to be, fresh water or salt. 
A fig tree or an olive tree? You can't be both at the same time. So in other words, who are you going to become? Are you going to become like Christ as you walk with him every day? Or are you going to become someone that is duplicitous and antithetical to the, to, to the Lord or hypocritical and to, you believe one thing but live another way? None of us should want to be hypocrites. Our speech gives us away. So we have to choose our words wisely. Your choice of words is a reflection of how closely you walk with God and want to walk with God. This father was picked up his five-year-old girl and she threw her arms around his neck and she, he, she's just hugging him and he's walking. And the mom was walking behind her and so was her little brother. And the mom looked up at her daughter and she saw the daughter as she's putting her arms around the father's neck. She's, the daughter was sticking her tongue out at her little brother. The mother says, sweetheart, you can't be hugging daddy and mocking your brother at the same time. You got to let go of daddy's neck if you're going to behave like that. What a good picture for what it means. You can't be praising God and cursing people all in the same breath or even in different breaths. James was saying it's wrong to praise God with high words of devotion and curse people with low words of damnation. James says you got to then choose your words wisely. He's not just talking about profanity. He's talking about words that are destructive and damaging and damning words. Hey, James said, don't, don't do that. Now, some people have a problem with profanity, and, and if you do, you have to let God help you. His father was holding the hand of his little boy, and the pastor just finished sermon, and they're at the back of the sanctuary just greeting people. And the little boy walked over to the father, or to the pastor rather. The little boy walked over to the pastor and just kicked him right on his shin. And he said, you bunny rabbit. And the father said, son, don't do that to the nice pastor. And so on the way home, the father or the pastor had three teenagers, uh, kids, and he says, yeah, this little boy called me bunny rabbit. And one of the teenage sons said, dad, do you know why he called you bunny rabbit? He said, no. He said, that little boy has a problem with cursing. And his parents had him replace the words, the MF word, with bunny rabbit. So now when the pastor's hearing that, his hand grabbed the steering wheel even tighter because the boy was cursing him out when he called him bunny rabbit. That night, or that Wednesday night, they had choir rehearsal. And the pastor is in his office, and he heard these footsteps running down the hallway in front of his office. And he had one of those, vertical, those blinds, uh, those blinds that, that, that close when you turn that, uh, that spindle. And so when he looked out, it was that same little boy that had called him Bunny Rabbit, running up and down the hallway. So he grabbed a box of juice from his refrigerator and went over to the blind and opened it up a little bit and dangled the box of juice <laughs> like that. And the little boy came, he saw the box juice, he kicked the door open. He said, bunny rabbit, give me a box juice. <laughs> so the pastor plucked him. Don't call me no bunny rabbit. He said, he said bunny rabbit, don't pluck me. He plucked him again. Bunny rabbit, I'm going to tell my dad. Pastor, I'm going to whoop you and your dad. He said, don't you ever call anybody bunny rabbit again. You understand? He said, yes, pastor, yes. He's, and they drank a box of juice together. <laughs> the issue James was bringing out, you wonder how in the world this got into the text. You know, it's, James was helping us to learn how to choose our words wisely. It's not about just adjusting words. It's about adjusting hearts. See, the communication doesn't start with the words, it starts with the heart. 
And so James describes the kind of walk that we ought to have with God that we must not be thinking that we're going to be both salt water and fresh water at the same time. You can't be someone that has one foot in the kingdom, one foot out of the kingdom in the way you communicate. It must be honoring and respectful. It must be life-giving. You must choose the type of fruit you want to become and the type of fruit you want to produce. I love what Joel Osteen said. Be careful what you say. You can say something hurtful in 10 seconds, but 10 years later, the wounds are still there. So when we deal with the idea of taming the tongue, this tongue can get us into a lot of trouble and a lot of problems. And so part of you walking with Jesus every day is that you allow him to take control of your tongue. You say things like, God, help me to cultivate awareness so I can see the power of my words. Help me to manage my emotions so my emotions won't let me choose words that's going to create hurt and damage and cause a fire of hell to blaze. Help me to choose my words, my words wisely so I'll understand how to speak to people, both personally and professionally. Let me bring back verse 9 again to us. Verse 9 says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. What James is underscoring for us in order to help us to allow God to work on us, even in our communication style, James is saying, practice accountability. See, when you are accountable before God in how you speak to people, no matter who they are, to speak to them respectfully because they have been made in God's likeness. And it doesn't matter what their worldview is, doesn't matter how they behave, doesn't matter how, what their values are. God says every created being, every human being has been created according to my likeness. So when you speak to them, it shows what you think about me. So James is telling us in a very practical way, practice accountability by developing the habit of speaking kindly to and about others. Speaking kindly is about, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's, it, it's you being able to recognize that there's power in your words. Paul tells us in Colossians 4 verse 6, something very interesting. Paul says, when you speak to people, always speak kind words. Say things that will help them. Then, when someone asks you a question, you will know how to reply. What, what, what's, what's Paul saying? Paul's saying, say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it mean. So Paul is telling us, look, speak kindly. And he's also telling us, speak positively. Ask God to help you tame your, excuse me, tame your tongue so you will have a positive, uplifting, encouraging way to communicate. In other words, be helpful when you speak to people. Interestingly enough, if you like academic research, Dr. Herbert Clark, a psychologist at Stanford University, studied the impact or the difference between positive and negative ways of communicating. He says that it takes on average about 46 seconds longer to understand a sentence using a negative frame or a negative presentation than it does to understand a sentence that is positive or, or affirmative in tone. It doesn't mean that you can't be constructive in how you communicate to people. It just means frame it in a way that's hopeful and helpful and not destructive and damaging. So when we think about practicing accountability, when you're accountable to God, it's not only the way you speak, it's also you listening attentively. When you listen attentively or you're leaning in to listen, you're allowing yourself to learn how that person wants to be spoken to or how they prefer you to communicate. And it's so important. And so by listening, you're able to then bring a control to me and my big mouth. 
So you welcome honest feedback. Yeah, how am I coming across? How are you interpreting my statements? Is there anything I need to adjust? I do that when I go overseas and I speak in a different country, different culture that I may have never been before. I always ask, how did I come across? What do I need to adjust? Because Sometimes you may not even realize that your style of communication is very offensive to another group, another culture, and you don't know. And the only way you know is when you practice accountability by saying, what can I do to improve on the way I speak to you or the way I relate to you so that our relationship will grow healthier over time? And when you pose those questions, it gives you a chance in practicing accountability to ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness helps to clean the slate. Forgiveness helps to give you a do-over. Forgiveness helps to really scrub the heart. But the forgiveness must be genuine. I remember meeting with this couple and the wife had shut down emotionally because the husband had said something and his big mouth got him in trouble. And I said to him, I said, brother, you need to apologize to your wife because you hurt her deeply. I said, would you turn to your wife now and apologize to her? And when he spoke and apologized, it sounded like Shakespeare. And when he finished, I said, man, that apology was so winsome. But I didn't believe a word that you said. And he smiled because he knew he was lying all along. And his wife just teared up because that's what she had had to put up with. Someone who speaks with flowery language but are not sincere. And so I helped him get in touch with sincerity and authenticity, which gives him the power to help his wife find healing and wholeness. I want you to see that God loves us so much that he doesn't want any of us to continue with this big mouth. He wants us to tame our tongue, to subdue it, and he will help us as we walk with him. Ladies and gentlemen, may I share with you those four lessons again. Cultivate awareness. Manage your emotions. Choose your words wisely. And practice accountability. These four things you'll be doing for the rest of your life because we always have to be in the business of taming our tongue. Would you stand with me, please? There are some people sitting here in this room or standing now that you have shut down or have gotten to a place where some words have really damaged you. And those persons may have spoken the words, some of them may have passed away already, but you've been totally damaged. Would you come and gather here at the altar, please? I want God to do some surgery on you today. I don't know who may have, who may have damaged your mom or dad, a supervisor, a friend, a sibling, a spouse. I want you to come. Because every now and again, those words, they just keep surfacing in your heart and your mind. Those words, they just keep just getting the best of you. God is in the business of performing heart surgery. Come, don't be afraid or embarrassed. Sometimes those words, they just, they start growing. They take up roots in our heart. And if we're not careful, those words just get stronger and stronger and bigger and bigger. You know, the challenge with that is, and I'm not trying to minimize the hurt by those words, but I will point out to you that isn't God greater than that person that hurt you? And isn't God's opinion of you greater than that person's opinion of you? And at some point, you're going to have to say, God, your value of me is greater than than that person's assessment or interpretation of me. And if I have to choose which one I give more credence to, I'm choosing you, God. I'm choosing you. And today, I want you to put that thing to bed. I want you to bury that thing. Today, I want you to take that person off the throne of your heart and Jesus wants to sit on the throne of your heart. Jesus' evaluation of you, Jesus' perspective of you, Jesus' thoughts of you, Jesus is the one who loves you. 
And he loves you more than anyone could. And he loves you more than anyone could hate you. So open your heart wide. Right now, let the Lord just wash your heart. You deserve, you deserve a clean heart. You deserve a, futile, a fertile heart. You deserve a heart that's healthy. You deserve a healthy interior where you enjoy and love yourself. Jesus tells us we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Nothing wrong with loving yourself. You're supposed to love yourself. Father, I thank you for each one of these tremendous men and women. I pray that you perform a heart surgery today. Go into their heart, into their mind, into the crevices of their soul where they hurt, where those painful memories of words have stung and have taken root. I ask that you'd uproot those words right now. Take up all the roots of those words that have harmed them from people in their lives that they had valued, that they valued. I pray, Lord, that you replace those words with that each one, Lord, you love them. Each one you've gifted. Each one you've graced. Each one you've anointed. Lord, I pray that the power of your grace will just percolate in their hearts. Not only for these here at the altar, but those watching online around the world. I thank you, Lord, that the power of the Spirit is effecting change in each heart. Bring healing, Father. I thank you. And for all of us today as we're here, for you who have never prayed before to invite Jesus to be your Savior, to live inside of you, would you, right where you're standing, pray this prayer with me quietly in your heart if you'd like Jesus to come into your heart and be your Savior and wash away your sins. Here we go. Repeat after me this prayer quietly in your heart. Heavenly Father, I need you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Wash away my sins change me and help me to walk with you and to grow with you every day of my life starting right now I pray this in the name of Jesus Amen Amen Father help us as a church to tame our tongue to be able to know how to speak to one another not only here but everyone in our lives on our jobs in our homes Teach us, Lord, how to honor you in our speech. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. If you prayed with me a moment ago to give your heart to Jesus, let us put one of these envelopes in your hand. It's titled The Next Step. It'll help you grow in your relationship with God. And at the exits, before you leave the room, there'll be men and women standing with these packets in their hand. Please take one if you just prayed with me. Have a great week, everyone. God bless you. Have a great week. Hello, CC Online family, and welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. back. What an amazing word that that was. You my big old mouth. Mm, sobering, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Quite Very so. sobering, right? Quite so, yes. Um, but if you pray to receive Jesus as your personal mm -hmm. Savior, we want to be the first to say congratulations welcome. and welcome to the family. You've made the best decision of your life, and we welcome you to the family of our God. Amen. Welcome, guys. And, you know, uh, keep submitting your prayers. We would love to pray for you literally um, before the, uh, the service ends. So please continue to, to write down those prayer requests for you. Absolutely. The other thing is that word. That word. What about that sermon stood out the most to you? All those points were so deep. And so, I mean, I, I can, I relate to all of them. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, <laughs> You know, but I, I believe really uh, cultivate awareness where mm -hmm. it's um, taming your tongue. How, how do you how do you process here before you release anything? Mm. You know, so uh, that for me is what stood out the most. Really thinking before you speak and pausing and pondering before you even release a word to someone. So yeah, that's, that's good. That's that's it for me. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And I think for me choosing your words wisely mm. you know words are such powerful things and you can say a word in 10 seconds and and it stays around for 10 years i think that was one of the servant sermon <laughs> points and so words have the power yeah. to heal and the power to wound and so sometimes in our anger we just speak 
And so for me personally, that hit home the most, to choose my words wisely. I don't have to always respond. I don't always have to respond. That's deep. Yeah. That's deep. So we have opportunities to serve in our church. And why do we need service in our church at this time? We've had such an increase since the New Year's. 2024 came in strong. And literally, we've had like a 30, 40 uh, increase of congregants just come in to all of our locations. So That's because amazing. of that, it is amazing. <laughs> and because of that, we we see the need to add more services. Oh, That's awesome. And That's what does awesome. that mean? That means... <laughs> That means we need you and your gifts. Absolutely. You know, all of you have special giftings that will be a part of and incorporated in building, you know, this generation, our children, and every, every ministry here at Christ Church. That's right. So if you have a special gift or you feel especially called mm -hmm. to a particular area, student ministries, media, the welcome team, right? Everyone wants to see a smiling face when they come in. Please use the QR code right now to join one of our Sunday experience teams. And every time you serve, you have the ability to impact an entire family, a life. So please take a moment and join one of our Sunday experience teams. That's right. Remember, you are impacting a family or a person when you serve. Absolutely. So, so um, we have we have some people that we want to pray for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but before that, remember, follow that QR code. Yeah. In order and to sign up. In order for you to sign now, because you know, student ministry is a big one. It is the second largest ministry here. So make sure um, that you have a heart for children. If you have a heart to serve. Please make sure you, you select that and, and you serve with us alongside of us. Or media, you have, um, you're a people person, you like, you like to be behind the cameras. Make sure you do that. Uh, there's a space for you. And if you like to welcome people, there's a space for you too. But let's get into the prayers. So what do we have here to pray? So let's go ahead and pray for Donna. We ask that God would uh, help you to make the right decision as you contemplate your career changes. And we ask that God would give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Um, Stephanie, a speedy recovery for you and your surgery. Father God, we just pray that you would just bring healing to every part of her body. And may it be speedy, Father God. Um, just bring your healing to Stephanie this time, and this day, this moment. Amen. And we ask for Renee Richards. We ask that God would help mm -hmm. you to better manage your emotions. And with the help of God, that you would be whole in him, in Jesus' name. And so we thank each of you for coming out. We thank you for being here with us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you back next week. We'll see you next time. Take you care. Guys.